Hey guys, it's Jacqueline over here at homeschoolhangout.xyz and today we're going to talk about time management for your children and how to teach that to them. If you like these kinds of videos, do me a favor, thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment, all the things, and let's get into it. So today we got planners in the mail. Yay, new planners. It's new planner season for us here which can happen in either the fall or in, in December, depending on which planner we're using. But before we get to talking about specific planners, let's talk about what this video isn't. So what this video isn't is any kind of lesson planning. We're not looking at that. We are not looking at how you, the parent, administrator, teacher, call it what you want, is managing your school for the whole year. This is not about a paper planner grading, a, a paper planner for the teachers, grading, grade books, any of that. Uh, to be completely upfront, I had a lineup of what I wanted to teach my kids and what I still want to teach my kid, my one kid I'm homeschooling now. But I never laid out, oh, January 3rd, this is what we're doing. And here are the vacation days and here, I never did that. Part of it was starting very young. If my kids did homework faster or slower, as far as uh, understanding concepts, I felt off. I felt like we weren't on schedule, things weren't lined up right, and it was a lot of pressure for me. Now, don't get me wrong. I had, this is the math book we're doing. Here's the history we're wanting to do. I did plan it a couple weeks in advance or to a month. In advance so I could order any crafting supplies but I didn't like do a big lesson plan. Um, in California we don't need those. I understand that they're necessary for some states. We are not one of those. So I didn't. Now I have natural born planners. Some of my kids. My oldest he's like three years old and he wants to know what's for dinner tomorrow and he wants to know what we're doing Friday and he wanted to know all those things. And so we did start in all of this, this very important phrase that if I say it around all my children and just stop, they'll finish. And it's, this is the plan and plans change. So before you get too deep into teaching your kids any kind of time management or planning, you have to first and foremost teach them that things change and you gotta be able to flow with it. If your plans are going to make you upset, if and I, and I mean really upset. We're all easily annoyed by it. But if you're going to just be devastated if you miss a homework, not assignment, but a homework like work time or, you know, because somebody gets sick and has to go to the hospital, things have to move around, don't commit to it if you can't handle that fact. I'll just warn you. I started with my oldest. I would lay out the next like two months, three months of stuff. And when we didn't have time because there was a baby, a newborn baby who was up all night crying, I was just devastated. So I had to stop uh, laying out my lesson plans for that reason. So plans change. But that being said, when my kids got to be in about first grade and were reading, um, I would buy the Dollar Tree notebooks, the the planners that they have. And I mean, they're now a dollar. They're up to a dollar twenty five. And they have little, they have about that much room for the day. And I would write down their assignments. I would at the weekend on Sunday before the week started, I would write all of their assignments for that week and any activities we were doing, park days, things like that in there. And then I'd give them their calendars. In reality, my kids liked that autonomy. I understand not all children do, but my kids also wanted to have some sort of idea of what their workload looked like and all of that. And that started really, really young. So we did that. But then as they got older, it no longer was my problem. It was their problem. So we started having them do their own planners. So like I said, I have pretty new planners that haven't even been written in yet. But before we get to that, what are we putting in there? Well, in reality, there's, I'd say, four areas of things that you need to look at. First, appointments doctor's appointments, park days, whatever that is time specific. Now, time sensitive, time specific. So you write down those kinds of things. We're going to the park next Friday. We have a field trip. Uh, 
you've got a doctor's appointment, somebody's coming over for dinner, whatever those things are, you put those down first. Then you also put down due dates. So this isn't necessarily when you're working on something, but when it's due by. Now, I understand for homeschoolers, there aren't a lot of due dates, but as your kids get older, you might want to give them some so they learn how to handle them. But also, if your kids dual enroll in college or take any outside class, you might have some due dates. So our first due dates were things like Lego robotics projects that had to be done by a certain time. You know, the team needed you to have your portion of a script written, or you needed to have these programs written before the next practice, whatever that was. Those due dates go in because they are a fixed time that things are due. So like my daughter right now is literally on the other side of the room. She's 16. She's taking a summer school class. She's taking ethnic studies for her associate's in computer science degree. And her final project is due next Thursday, I think it Friday. is. Next Friday. And... She has another paper due on Tuesday. Now, clearly, she's going to write those down because that's when it has to be done by. Okay? Next thing up is chores. We're trying to raise well-rounded, responsible children here who will become responsible adults, which means they need to have, learn how to, you know, do their own laundry and help clean the house. So if you're neurotic like me, I don't just say, oh, I want the house swept this week. I'm having people coming over for a board meeting on Monday. Things need to be done on this day or on that day, whatever. And, you know, you figure out whatever your chore schedule is for your house, you know. So-and-so is emptying the dishwasher on these days. Whatever that is, you put that down. But then there is the elusive fourth area. And this is where they really do need the practice for this skill. And I say this, I was taught to have a planner where all my due dates were down but I wasn't taught how to manage my time, which means I've watched a lot of productivity videos and learned a lot as an adult. And I'm going to try to give my kids this skill. So they're start ahead of me. And that is how to figure out everything else. So like I said, my daughter has two papers due in the next week, one on Tuesday, one on Friday. As much as she might be able to get away with just cranking it out, sitting down right before it's due and cranking it out, we aren't going to teach our children to do what we did. We're going to try to help them figure out a strategy. So she's going to break it down. There are certain benchmarks they need for this paper. They have to submit it to a tutor to verify that they wrote it, things like that. So looking at all of her appointments and all of her due dates and all of her chores, she then fills in blocks of time she's planning on working with on things. Now, do not get me wrong. I am not talking about minute-by-minute minute planning by any means. I'm talking about some loose time blocks. So I basically break up my day into like four big areas. There's the after breakfast and before lunch, or not breakfast, but after, you know, you get up and get ready until lunch. Between lunch and dinner, between uh, dinner and bedtime, and then any other, I wanted to say there's four, but yeah, it's basically the morning, the afternoon, maybe early evening and late evening or nighttime. And basically she goes, well, I want to either have this many words. Or I need to get done these certain things for the morning. I'm going to work on that. And then, you know, you've got a time that you'll be working on that. So let's say she's working on it this Friday morning for next Friday. And she has a friend who says, hey, can you get together Thursday afternoon? Well, she already knows that she's got time blocked out to do her paper on another time. So she can say yes. It also helps in the idea of like, for example, uh, college math classes. Often they're like three days a week. And when I took calculus recently, we got all of our lectures for the week ahead of time. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But homework was due three times a week. So we had it due, I think it was Sunday night, Sunday night, Tuesday night, and Thursday night. Okay? So me and my neurosi, I would tell my children, and I operated this way too, your work blocks need to plan on you doing the majority, if not all of it, the day before it's due. Why? If it takes you longer than you're planning, you still have time day of. And I say this because most of these homework assignments are due like at five o'clock or midnight on the day. 
So if I had an assignment due Tuesday night, I would plan on working on it Monday afternoon. That way, if I needed help, if I needed to go to office hours, if it just took me longer, I had some extra time Tuesday afternoon that I would block out to finish up the undone things or jump on the next homework assignment, one of the two. So you kind of block that out. And this helps so, you know, kids, when they get up, I have nothing to do. What am I supposed to do? Well, what assignments have you not done? Also, you have random to-do lists, meaning like my kids are all at the job hunting age. Oh, I was going to put in this application or I was going to look ahead or it's video game time. That's what time it is. It's go, you know, my 16 year old likes to paint and do things. My almost 18 year old, he it's video games for him going and talking to his friends or hopping on a call all of those things, then you've kind of got all your blocks in so you can plan your life for all the things you want. Yeah. You want to have time to go to coffee with a friend? Put that in your time block. Do you have time after you get all the homework assignments blocked out? You do? Awesome. And that is a skill that I use all the time as an adult. Because let's be clear, if you said I couldn't do anything fun or relaxing or just, you know, spending time with my family until everything I have for the week is done, I would maybe get 15 minutes on Friday afternoon. Maybe. Maybe. Because everything is never done. You just have your deadlines checked off. So what do we use for that? Well, let me start with the one thing I do not recommend if you are not already using a calendar. And that is, I love the Passion Planner. They make a variety of layouts, but it is their a daily planner I do not recommend. Why? Well, here is what a daily plan looks like in this. Let's make sure you can see it. I've got my times, I block out times and stuff, and then your priorities and all that. And this is all great. But when I'm laying out my whole week, I can't see my week all at one spot. So I don't recommend that. I recommend some sort of weekly planner. I happen to have two. Um, <laughs> this is one I just picked up for my almost 18 year old. He's, he's going to just be meaning not high school and a college student this semester. And he recently graduated and this was $10 from Amazon. I'll link it in the bottom. And it is a weekly monthly planner. And so I am planning on filming a walkthrough on this for my other channel, but we've got sections. Let me just make the thing. This has got a password section. Don't put your passwords in there. Just don't. And this one has a lot of pre-work in it, but this is why we bought it. So it does have a monthly layout. So if you have any like monthly big things you want to use it for, feel free here. You can even list your monthly to-dos. But what we bought it for was this weekly layout. So for him, he is at the point where he likes to do it a little bit more this way. He writes down all his day specific stuff. He writes down all of his priorities. So this says work to do, personal to do. This week's wins, how I'll improve next week. We will see how far into that he goes. But he has this note section because let's be clear, he has, usually when he's in college, a list of things to accomplish through the week. Okay? So here he put all his daily things. So let's say, let's say this was next week. He put, you know, paper due. You know, whichever, whatever we're calling that paper. But over here, he would include whatever that checklist is he needs to include for it. And then he can mark, you know, writing time just on here. So yeah, so this one, I think this is going to work really well for him. So this is for Ender Jora. And then, but that's not everyone's cup of tea. We also like this for him because it's relatively small. It has an elastic to close it. And this can go in his backpack because he will not be primarily at home. This, on the other hand, is nerd puts. This is, she loves the celestial and it doesn't have any astrology in it. And she loves that. But she has a specific layout she likes. And that is the vertical layout. So let me hop in here. She's in an 18 month. I'll be honest, part of the reason that she is getting her 18 month right now is not because she's ready for her planner, but because this has gone on clearance. So she can use it for 2024 and start it whenever she wants. It's the same layout basically as what she's using now. 
And this um, we like because you can pull in and pull out things. I have note pages that you can put in here. You can punch things. This is the disc system, which we love. Let me go ahead and just pull that out and I'll show you. So this is the basic layout. It has a notes section here, so you can put whatever. In mine, I put my meal plan there on this side. And then she splits hers up a little differently. She likes to take that top section, if I remember correctly, and she puts all the date bound stuff. And she likes to do it for the whole family. Even though we have a Google calendar she could look at. She likes doing it for the whole family. Then in this middle section, I'm trying to remember, and I could be having these flopped that one's on top, one's on the bottom. But the middle section, she likes to put all of her chores and all of that stuff. Then on the bottom, she puts all of the homework and things that she's going to work on for that kind of stuff. And so that's how she likes to have hers laid out. And she's been doing it for a couple years now. We'll also be honest, the difference between her and her brothers is she color codes and she has erasable uh, pit friction pens that she uses. And she has lots of notes like that. She likes to have everybody's stuff. And this is what she uses. Now, Happy Planner makes another layout that I really like. And honestly, this is what I actually use for business stuff. And it is their dashboard layout. And the reason I use it is, frankly, I would use this as my daily planner because so much of what I do is not bound by a specific day versus a week, except I can't fit my family in here, you know, all their stuff. And I like to, I use the vertical and the bottom third is all for the family. And just like where the kids are going, that's all it's in that bottom section is where the kids go. And then the rest of the basic plan is in the top two thirds. But I like this one. If I didn't have kids who are out and about so much and didn't have so much of that to track. Now for my business one, totally not related. I put all my social media stuff here. But I love this because in addition to this section here, which is, you know, you could put your meal plan here if you wanted or whatever. You have all of this space. But then for me, I always have running lists of tasks. So let's say I want to do six loads of laundry or I wanted to read 50 pages of a book for an assignment if I were a student. I could put all of those on here because sometimes I just, even now, I do work blocks and I don't know what all I'm going to get accomplished in those work blocks, but I put everything I want here. And you could separate them. These come pre-labeled and they say tasks, important, looking ahead, notes. Remember, this is your plan. You just write a note through it and your kid can do whatever they want. If they've got, you know, a big project and they want that bottom section for that big project and it's, you know, let's say their science fair project. Great. That could be their science fair project section. But that's how we use our planner. My kids outgrew their Dollar Tree planners just from size, I would say, end of elementary school. Uh, maybe some of them junior high. But then, yeah, after we let them kind of try out some different layouts. Now, I admit it, I like stickers and colored pens and all that in mine. My 16-year-old daughter, she likes just colored pens. She doesn't like stickers for the actual things, but then sometimes she'll decorate the sides and stuff like that but it's their planner. So yeah, these are some strategies that can help them learn how to manage their time. Some people love the plan every minute model and will do that on their Google calendar. It stresses me out, but that's also another version of that. So what do you do with your kids? Do they have their own calendars? Do you have a family calendar? Do you use a calendar? I want to know. Let's keep the conversation going either down in the comments, on social media, Facebook group or a Patreon and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.